Coming up next on The Forum, I'll be talking with Jim Bear from Healing Minnesota Stories. That's coming up next on The Forum. Welcome to The Forum. I'm your host, Sonny. Be sure to follow SPNN all over social media at SPNN, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at SPNN as well. Sitting with me today, I have Jim Bear from Healing Minnesota Stories, right? Yes. Welcome, Jim Bear. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. So I, I usually just jump right into the questions, but I wanted it to be more fun this okay. time around, because sometimes people are nervous. You don't really seem nervous, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still fun yep. to ask the question. So my first question for you is, Tell me about a time where you should have said no, but you said yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, I've had a number of jobs that I should have said no to. <laughs> I think we can all and, agree yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah, one of them uh, was painting cars, and I was very bad at it. Oh, really? <laughs> and driving around in a van all day with with a horrible chemical smell. It just was not, <laughs> not good, so okay. I definitely should have said no to that, to that. one. Okay, all right. Yeah. So name a song you love, but everybody else hates. <laughs> I don't know if uh, everyone else hates it. There's most certainly people. Most, um, okay. Total Eclipse of the Heart is that's my a, jam. That's a jam! I know. And I think they've remade it maybe once or twice? I think so. I think that's a, that's a good song. That's the one that always, when it comes on, I crank, and no matter what, what's going on. That's a classic. So, yeah. yeah, that was even in old school, so mm -hmm. that's a classic. And then, name a phrase or word you wish people would stop using. Uh, Redskins. Redskins? I agree yes. with you. I yeah. agree with you on that one. And then I'll give you this last one, and then we'll get into the interview. Um, if you had one hour to live, what kind of junk foods would you eat? Oh. <laughs> um, my wife and I went on a date one time to this quaint little place, and they made the best Bananas Foster for dessert. What's Bananas Foster? I've never they heard They light bananas on fire right outside your, at the side of your table and caramelize the sugars, and oh, they wow. serve it over ice cream. And oh, it was that sounds good. Awesome. For the last hour, nothing but burnt bananas. Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, now that we know a little bit more about you, mm -hmm. let's talk about why you're here today, okay. which is basically about your connection to the artwork in the Capitol. But before mm -hmm. we get into that, just tell us how you even got connected with that journey into. Sure. Uh, so in 2012, I founded this organization called Healing Minnesota Stories. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of our organization is to ensure that the Native American and, and indigenous voices are brought into arenas where they're typically overlooked. And um, one day we had a volunteer do a presentation about some of the artwork uh, in St. Paul uh, City Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he had spent many years sitting in the city council chambers looking at the artwork and it troubled him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so this was kind of an enlightening moment and we decided, well, we should see what else is out there. So uh, about four of us volunteers went for a, a guided tour of the state capitol uh, that focuses on the artwork in the capitol. And I remember specifically, if you've ever been at a tour of the capitol, it usually ends where you go outside mm -hmm. on the roof and you look at what's called the quadriga, the, the, the golden horses mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. there. And then when you come back in, you're on the third level and you're overlooking the rotunda. Right. And there's always school children at the state capitol. It's one. Of, it's a regular field trip. Field trip that they take. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was sitting up there, uh, and the, the tour had just kind of concluded. I was standing up there, and I was overlooking, and there was uh, at least two busloads of students down in the artwork or down in the floor of the rotunda, and the the ethnic makeup of that those two groups was incredibly diverse. Mm -hmm. um, just all sorts of shades of brown mm -hmm. faces. Mm -hmm. And it dawned on me that I just spent the last hour walking through this building and nothing 
no image in this building said that any of those brown faces could ever hope to have a position in this building. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there that, that said that, that they represents them that represents or represents something them. that they could relate to. Yeah. Um, and then also as a Native American, I was very conscious of how Natives were portrayed in the Capitol because um, there's no shortage of Native portrayals in mm -hmm. the state Capitol. There's an incredible blind spot for other people of color, but Natives are there. Are, are there mm -hmm. And it's, it's a disturbing uh, way that they're portrayed. Right. Okay. So that's kind of how I got started. We, we, then we, we did uh, a time of research and capturing some of these images and doing research about the artists and their intent uh, on these images. And um, that's kind of how I got started mm -hmm. uh, doing this work. Well, it's kind of old since they've since the first artwork has been in there. How long has it been? 1905 yeah. is when the building was completed, and most yeah. of the artwork in there was commissioned for for the building. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. I had a bunch of questions for you, and we talked before the interview started, and I thought you were one of the artists that were going to, mm -hmm. you know, be adding artwork to the Capitol. And so um, you brought a presentation today, mm -hmm. and so let's just talk about some of the pictures that okay. you brought, and who's going to be, um, like, are these, are, these, are these images going to be in, so, like, explain the whole process of why you're doing, why you're going around with this presentation. Sure. Uh, I've been going around with this presentation uh, for the last two years in front of hundreds of people uh, really to try to establish some grassroots support for um, revisiting the artwork at the Capitol. And, and we, we started a petition and uh, uh, we appealed to, uh, there's several layers of bureaucracy mm -hmm. governing the Capitol building itself. but. Right now there is, uh, it just concluded, a legislative subcommittee that is to advise the Capital Preservation Committee about uh, what to do with the artwork. And so we, we followed their progress in that. But the presentation that, uh, that I've been doing for the last two years is to raise awareness to the artwork that's in the Capitol building, because most people have been to the Capitol, mm -hmm. but no and one really, really knows. And don't pay attention to sure. it. Yeah, I've been there. Sure. <laughs> I've been there. But, you know, what I want people to understand is that artwork in the Capitol tells a story, mm -hmm. and the building itself holds that story. Mm -hmm. and, and I just believe that we, as 21st century Minnesotans, we can tell a better story. Right, right. And so one of the things that we would hope uh, is that we could remove some of the offensive images and not get rid of them, but place them someplace off-site in a museum mm -hmm. or something where they can be given proper context, mm -hmm. and we can hold that discussion there. Why uh, keep it though if it's offensive? I'm, I, I hate to cut you off, but why keep it if it's because it it shows a snapshot of where our where the mindset was. Where the mindset was. The mindset was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I respect so, that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So. Sure. Let's, let's get into the images. <laughs> okay. So this, this image right here um, is part of a four-part uh, uh, series of paintings. And this is when you walk into the Capitol and you <laughs> look straight up at the rotunda, right. these images, this is one of the images that um, surrounds the rotunda. And uh, the, the, the series is called The Civilization of the Northwest. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is in the prior image to this, uh, our, our sturdy white man there has been called away from his home to the east to go civilize the Northwest. And here he is now in this territory. Back then, you know, back when Minnesota was Northwest Territory. Um, and what he's doing here is he's, he's purging the land of the undesirable features. Mm. And the, the floating, goddesses there, that, those are the goddesses of hope and wisdom, and they follow him all throughout his journey. So, and here in the corner is uh, what he's purging the land of. Now he's purging the land of savagery, which mm -hmm. is represented by this, this uh, kind of large grizzly bear there. Okay. And he's purging the land of cowardice, which is represented by this mountain lion that has okay. kind of a, a submissive posture mm -hmm. there. At the bottom, yeah. Yeah. And he's purging the land of Sin, which is this female body with the head of a fox. I don't really know what the imagery there is. But he's also purging the land of stupidity. And stupidity takes on a dark-skinned human form. Oh, no. And you can see that pur by purging the land, it's a violent uh, action. He's got 
a whip in his hand, and mm -hmm. he is he is um, physically driving these things out. Mm -hmm. And this is troubling. And although you know, you can't really tell from this image that this is specifically a Native American, it is a dark-skinned human figure, mm -hmm. considerably darker than than anyone else, any other human figure in the image. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it. it to me, it looks like the people who were here in Minnesota before settlement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and this is part of, uh, you know, as, as, as school kids, we hear the term manifest destiny. And this is just an image that kind of, I think, captures this ideology of manifest destiny. Mm -hmm. How, how do you, who came up with the description? Like, how do you know that that's what each of, <laughs> what all of that means? Yeah, we uh, we had a volunteer who did a lot of research on all of the, okay. the artists and uh, kind of read their bios and then uh, the artist descriptions of, of these pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say you get enough people to say, hey, you know what, which you, I believe you will, mm -hmm. um, to say, you know what, we probably need to uh, change these pictures and reflect the people who are living in the Twin Cities, which mm -hmm. is a variety of cultures and, and generations and things like that. I mean, where would you start? Are you, you said something earlier about working with kids and having them draw up some stuff. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we've done, uh, we have uh, one one young woman who was uh, present at one of my presentations. She was an art teacher mm -hmm. out in Brooklyn Center, and she took it upon herself to have her junior high students uh, reimagine artwork for the Capitol. Okay. And and so uh, I think it was something like 60 students. Mm -hmm did paintings or drawings and stuff, and just, just taking a look at Minnesota history through their perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and since that time, and I should do mention this, that art teacher uh, happens to be Miss Minnesota. Oh, nice. Right now. So, <laughs> nice. So, uh, uh, but um, uh, yeah, Rachel is her name, and, and so she started this idea of of getting students involved in this. And since that time, we've had, I believe, five other schools that have um, had some of their students contribute art all the way from, uh, there's an Ojibwe elementary school uh, way up on the Grand Portage Reservation who mm -hmm. have uh, created images um, in various junior highs and high schools mm -hmm. throughout. And so we have a traveling exhibit of some of the student art that, um, that Minnesota students have created, kind of reimagining Minnesota history uh, through their through perspective. Their eyes. Yeah. Okay, okay. You've been watching SPN Inform. I am Sani, your host, and with me today I have Jim Bear from Healing Minnesota Stories. And we were just in the middle of the conversation about um, the youth in Minnesota and them telling the story of. Uh, or the history of Minnesota through their eyes. It sounds like what I automatically thought of, it seems like it would be a really cool contest to get like college students involved who are majoring in art and, um, I don't know, professors. And it just seems like a really good opportunity for everybody to come together mm -hmm. and, and really give a better representation of its history versus through the eyes of you know, someone 100 <laughs> or, or more years yeah. ago. So, um, so where are you at right now with your, I guess that's your art campaign, I would call it. <laughs> sure. Um, so where we are right now is um, uh, we've, we've had the online petition and we've had uh, somewhere between six and 700 signatures. We've uh, met with various members of the Minnesota Historical Society, which mm -hmm. has the ultimate say in um, of the building itself. We've met with people uh, of the legislative subcommittee mm -hmm. that advises. And it's it's a slow and it's often a disheartening process because mm -hmm. politics are involved. And there's a lot of, frankly, there's a lot of kind of just privilege entrenched in the building itself and mm -hmm. that people, um, uh, you know, quite frankly, white politicians don't like to be told that they're wrong about mm -hmm. something. and. Uh, the fact that they go to work every day in a building that holds this this racist narrative, uh, this overtly racist narrative in the way that it depicts natives, and also a, a covert racist narrative in the fact that there really isn't any other, any other people of yeah. color that that you can look to and mm -hmm. say this is a shining example. Uh, there's there's not depictions of that in mm -hmm. the capital. Mm -hmm. 
So when you, I guess I don't want to get too much into, into the politics of it. What what other pictures did you? We'll do that. What okay. other pictures did you have here that you wanted to show us? So this this hangs in the governor's reception room. Uh, there are six works of art that hang in the governor's reception room. Is this the one that they featured in City Pages? Probably, yes. I think this yeah, is the one, this yeah. Is one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so this is called Father Hennepin Discovering the Falls at St. Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that uh, this was actually a historic event, not that I would use the word discovery, but Father Hennepin was brought to uh, St. Anthony Falls and by Dakota people. And uh, what's important to understand about the reason Cass Gilbert, the architect of the Capitol, chose the images for the, and commissioned the artwork in this room is he wanted to depict the most glorious moments in Minnesota history. Okay. And what I find incredibly troubling about this image is, um, number one, when this actually happened historically, Father Hennepin was, he was essentially a prisoner of the Dakota people. Okay. And when you look at this image, Father Hennepin is the one who's in charge. Mm -hmm. He has the say over what's happening. Um, but also number two, this is a very troubling image right here. We have a Dakota woman, uh, and she's carrying a, a furrier's pack. Now, historically, those packs weigh anywhere from 90 to 120 pounds. She's the only one in the picture that's actually doing anything, any actual work. And she's completely topless, mm -hmm. which is absolutely uh, the inaccurate. It's uh, totally inaccurate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dakota women <laughs> did not go around topless like that. They had a good, strong uh, ethic of modesty. Mm -hmm. And so then you ask yourselves, well, why? What were why you would an artist that picture? Sure. Yeah. And I think what this what this says is, um, you know, here we have a people that are very primitive. They're savage. They obviously need civilization. Mm. Um, and this, for the artist to do this, to intentionally go out of the norm of, of culture mm. to depict this. And um, we need to re also think about what the governor's reception room is. This is where the governor receives foreign dignitaries, you know, royalty right. from other countries, and also um, holds conferences conference meetings in this room with our tribal presidents and chair people, um, several of who are women, mm -hmm. you know, and to have to come into this room where you're intentionally, uh, the depiction in the room of you is intentionally that of primitive and savage. Mm -hmm. And um, you think about what this says about native women in this context. Again, she's the only one doing any physical labor. Mm -hmm and she's half naked. And when you consider that Native women are four times as likely to be the victims of sexual assault and violence uh, than any other people group. Cur have, right now, currently? Right now, currently. Wow. Um, this is not an image that I think does our Native girls any good. Or any girl to, for that or matter, Or any girl really, for that matter. To be honest. But, sure. Uh, it's very troubling. And, um, to be frank, I don't believe it belongs in the Capitol, and it certainly doesn't belong in the room where the artwork is well, intentionally put there. People are coming from different there. countries, and right. that's the, what, how, what are we saying mm -hmm. about Minnesota with that type and, of And the reason the artwork is in this room is to pick the most glorious moments of Minnesota history, and I, frankly, I don't think this is it. I, I agree with you. So, so going forward, what do you think needs to be done? Like, how can people help? Um, with this, because it's one—I mean, it's one thing to just sit back and talk, but what is going to actually move this forward to where? Um, I don't think it's too much to ask that the artwork in the <laughs> Capitol depicts the people who are living mm -hmm. here, and and I'm pretty sure there's there's tons of shining moments in Minnesota where <laughs> it depicts a variety of cultures. Sure. So, I mean, your advice on this? How do how do we move forward with this? Yeah, I think um, so. The legislative subcommittee. Um, They've convened their meetings and have, uh, I don't believe they finalized the report as of yet, but we, we happen to kind of know that one of the things they're going to suggest is the removal of this painting and one other painting and move to a different location in the Capitol. Um, but then also with the, uh, the, the restoration project of the Capitol building, the Historical Society has told us that that's gonna open up new space for new art. And uh, I think a demand that the people need to have, the people of Minnesota, is that those artists be selected f 
from a, a broad, diverse community mm -hmm. that can reflect a broad, diverse community. Because the thing is, um, this building was completed in 1905. Minnesota was essentially 50 years old at the time. Most of our history has happened since the since completion then, of right. that building. Right. And so this is a snapshot of the first 50 years or the mentality that existed in the first 50 years of right. Minnesota. And we're, we're so much more than we were that first 50 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a thriving Hispanic population. We have the largest Somali population outside of, of East Africa. Mm -hmm. We have um, one of the largest we Hmong of populations. Here. We, uh, exactly. <laughs> we got a lot of flavors and I, here. And I believe that the building that belongs to every citizen of the state of Minnesota should, should reflect, reflect that. that. Mm -hmm. So for those who are watching and they want to find out how to get involved with Healing Minnesota Stories, mm -hmm. um, contact information, where can we find you? Yeah, if you, uh, we're, we're an initiative of the St. Paul Interfaith Network. So our website is spinterfaith.org, okay. and there's uh, there's a menu there. there. There's a Healing Minnesota Stories page attached mm -hmm. to uh, spinterfaith.org. Okay. Are you guys on Twitter, Facebook, social media? Uh, That's where are. everybody's at. <laughs> I know. Yeah, um, uh, we are through Spin on on uh, Twitter and and Facebook. Okay. So. Okay. So lastly, any events uh, associated with Healing Minnesota Stories? Yeah. Uh, very excited. Um, we have uh, on June 24th uh, a grand opening at two different art galleries in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, All My Relations Art Gallery on Franklin Avenue and then two blocks over uh, Two Rivers Art Gallery, which is in the American Indian Center, also on Franklin Avenue. And the what it is is there in one gallery there are uh, commissioned pieces by professional artists in Minnesota, both native and non-native, as a reaction to the artwork in the Capitol. Okay. And then the other gallery will contain uh, several selections from the students who have contributed uh, to our project. Uh, and so that the, the grand opening is June 24th okay. at that, uh, but it will run for three months. It'll run through the middle of September. Okay. For that. Okay. And did you guys already have the students? I'm, I work with kids, so mm -hmm. I'm always excited when kids get to do their input. Yeah, we have, we have, um, we, we're collecting more, especially now that the school year is out, we're collecting more and more artwork that students have, have done. So it's always a growing collection of artwork. Um, and some of these pieces are so incredibly impressive mm. that you just wouldn't believe that that's junior, kids, high, right? junior high kids could do this. Because I know I don't have that talent. Could they put? Could some of that artwork potentially be something that you put before um, the committee who's responsible for changing the artwork? The committee is aware of it. Okay. We have shown them several of the pieces from the the students. Uh, also, every student who has contributed to our artwork or to our, our student art project has written a letter to the governor and nice. those letters have been delivered to the governor nice. so the governor is aware. And ultimately when the Capitol reopens, what we would love to do is is get a permit to display all of that student art for nice. two, three, four weeks uh, in the Capitol itself. And if nothing else, people could come and look at the artwork and vote. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's exciting. It yeah. sounds exciting for the kids that are involved to know that they're, that's a shining moment in history yeah, for them absolutely. artwork artwork wise. So any last things you want to say? Uh, I, I just hope that uh, people understand that, that buildings hold stories and mm -hmm. we need to have our state building and, and all of our public buildings tell a better story for our children. An accurate story. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Jim Bear, for coming down. And, and, and it's always fun. That I always learn everything from the guests that come here. So I'm really excited to see some of the artwork from the kids. Well, thank you. And it's my pleasure. And in the near future. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Yep. My name is Sonny and you've been watching SBNN's Forum. <laughs>